Okay, so in this video we want to introduce the concept of an interest only loan. And we've actually um, considered this concept in a slightly more abstract way already. So what we saw earlier in this topic was that it's possible to combine geometric and linear recursion, um, linear um, growth, sorry, um, or decay um, in a sequence so that the um, sequence actually doesn't grow or decay. Okay, so we can be both multiplying by a number and then adding or subtracting a number and we can do that in a way, in a particular combination that means that the um, value of the, the sequence remains the same, um, the values in it, of each term in the sequence remain the same. So for example, if we have a look at this particular sequence, if V0 is 10 and we want to write down the first four terms in the sequence, so the first term is 10, if I press enter in my CAS, we multiply by 1.2 and then subtract 2, we still have 10. So V1 would be 10. We then again do that again, multiply by 1.2 and subtract 2 and we get 10 again. And we get 10 again, etc. And the reason that's happening is because 0.2 of 10 is equal to 2. So multiplying by 1.2 is an increase of 2. We're increasing by 2. Sorry, increase of 2. Which means we then subtract 2 and so we're back to 10. And that means the same thing will happen at each step. So when we apply this to a financial maths context, um, if we were to think about taking out a loan of $10,000, which charges interest of 12% per annum compounded monthly, then the interest charge at the end of one month would be, so our monthly interest rate, first of all, would be 12 divided by 12, so 1% per month, so that's 0 0.01. So the interest at the end of one month would be 1% of 10,000, okay, so 0 0.01 times 10,000, so it'd be $100 of interest. So what that means if, is if in the first month the interest would be $100, if we were to then make a repayment that's greater than $100, that repayment is going to pay off the interest and then reduce the principal of the, of the loan. So now we'll have a smaller balance of our loan after the first month. Okay, which then means that um, the interest at the next month will be less and the repayment will then therefore pay off the interest and a bit of the loan again. Okay, and we gradually do that. We call that that's a reducing balance loan. That's what we've been looking at. If the loan were to be repaid with monthly repayments that are less than $100, then obviously the repayment wouldn't cover the cost of the interest and so the value of the loan would start to increase. Now, no bank is going to offer this you this loan. Um, a loan in which the balance continues to go up is um, certainly not something that we're looking at with loans. Um, so we've already looked at this. This is never going to happen. The third option that we haven't yet looked at is if the loan were to be repaid with monthly repayments of exactly $100, then all we're doing every month is just paying off the interest. Okay, We're not actually ever paying off the principal value of the loan, so the um, you know $10,000 that was borrowed. Um, the balance of the loan will remain at $10,000 every month. And all we're doing each month is just paying off the loan. And we call this an interest only loan, where what we do is just pay off the interest. Okay, And the, so the value of the loan remains the same. So for example, we can see the numbers of that here. Um, obviously, if we were to take our $10,000 loan, we're increasing it by 1% every month due to interest. If we were to pay off more than $100, we would see the value of the loan start to go down over time. Slowly at first, but that would get, get quicker as we go um, because the interest gets smaller and so therefore the $110 gradually pays off more and more of the loan with each repayment. If we were to pay off exactly $100 every month, all we're doing is paying off the interest. So we're increasing by 1.01, well increasing by 0 0.01, so um, sorry, multiplying by 1.01 .01 to increase by 1%. Um, and so that increases um, the value of the loan by $100, but then we repay $100, and so it goes back to being at $10,000. And the value just stays forever at $10,000, okay? That's called an interest-only loan. The balance remains constant, the interest is repaid every month. If the repayment is less than, not, less than $100, we would see the balance starts to go up, okay? We can generate those numbers with our CAS. So for example, the first loan, we start with $10,000 every um, month, we multiply by 1.01 .01, and then in the first example we take away 110 and we see that after one month, two months, three months, four months, etc. we can keep going. The value of the loan is gradually going down. If instead we start with $10,000 and we multiply that by 1.01 .01 and subtract exactly 100, we see that we can recur as much as we want. The value is going to stay at 10000 
If, however, we start with a value of $10,000 and we multiply by 1.01 and subtract $90, which is less than the interest, we see that the value of the loan is going to go up. And as I said, that wouldn't happen in practice. Um, so we're generally dealing with these two situations, reducing balance loan or an interest only loan. Okay, so interest only loans are sometimes available if the money is being borrowed um, to buy an asset that will increase in value. So for example, if a $250,000 interest only loan is taken out on a house, then in 10 years time, the value of the loan is still 250,000, but the value of the house is likely to be more than 250,000. So that's the logic and that's the, I guess, gamble that the bank takes, that the value of the asset will go up and so therefore um, the borrower will be able to repay the loan by selling the asset. Okay. Um, however, um, interest only loans are considered pretty risky banking practice because if the market were to crash and the value of the house was to actually go down, then the bank is now in trouble because the owner can't repay, uh, the borrower can't repay because the value of their asset is less than the amount that they owe. Um, and so it's considered pretty risky and it was certainly a focus of, um, probably not so recent now, but the um, Royal Commission into Banking a couple of years ago. Um, and interestingly, the um, large number of interest only loans in the US housing market was also considered a factor in the financial collapse that triggered the um, global financial crisis in 2007, 2008. Now, I'm not going to claim to be an economist, e economist or an expert in the um, housing market or anything or, or in the financial markets, um, but you know, this is certainly um, a practice that was more commonplace interest only loans than um, they are now. There's a lot tighter regulation around interest only loans. Okay, so let's have a look at what this is going to look like in the context of recurrence relation, amortization table, finance, finance solver, etc. Let's think about that. In particular, let's think about the recurrence relation because actually using an amortization table or a or finance solver even is actually overkill in these problems because these are actually very simple problems. The balance of the loan doesn't change, the repayments don't change, the interest doesn't change. Every the same exactly the same thing happens every month. So we don't really need finance solver to work out what's going to happen in 20 years because the same thing will be happening in 20 years as is happening in one year. Okay. Um, so again, if we set up the recurrence relation, if Vn is the balance of the loan after n compounding or repayment periods, so whether they be months or quarters or years or weeks or days, whatever they might be, lowercase r is the interest rate per compounding or repayment period, and d is the value of the payment made at each compounding or repayment period then the recurrence relation is going to look like this. So this is clearly a very familiar model. Nothing is different about these first three lines. This is the, a model for a reducing balance loan. But the difference is with an interest only, line, uh, only loan will, is that the repayment, D, is just going to be the interest at the first month or first compounding period. So the calculating the interest of, of the first compounding period, that's going to be equal to how much we repay. And that will keep the balance the same at each time. Okay, so as it says here, that, that is if the repayment amount is equal to the interest added in the first compounding period, then the balance of the loan will remain con constant and the interest added in each repayment period will also remain constant. Okay, so Marcus borrows $60,000 to invest in shares. He negotiates an interest-only loan for that amount at an interest rate of, sorry, that should say of, 9.2% per annum. Find correct to the nearest cent the amount that Marcus will need to pay if interest is compounded monthly and he makes monthly repayments. Okay, so if it's an interest only loan, if we want to find um, the payment amount, um, we simply need to work out how much interest, and this is monthly in part A, how much, how much interest would be earned in the first month, um, and then that's what he's going to need to repay. Okay, so the um, first month interest Is going to be now we need to first of all convert our interest rate to be a monthly interest rate okay so 9.2 divided by 12 is okay so that's not very nice so we'll work exactly with our CAS so 0.76 recurring percent okay so we want to work out what is 0.76 recurring percent of um, the loan 60,000 of the um, principal value $60,000 okay so that is point remember percent times by 100, 0 0.0076 recurring, times by 60,000. Okay, so I'm going to divide, in my case, I'm going to divide that amount by 100. Okay, so that's the um, decimal equivalent of the percentage. And so we then need to multiply that by 60, 
thousand. Okay, and that is four hundred and sixty dollars. Okay, so that's how much interest will be added in the first month, and so therefore the monthly repayment is going to be four hundred and sixty dollars. It's going to be equal to that interest. Because if we add $460 in interest and then we repay $460, the balance is still $60,000. And so next month, the interest will again be $460, we repay $460, the balance is still $60,000. Um, so find correct the nearest cent the amount that Marcus will need to pay if um, interest is compounded monthly and he makes monthly repayments. So he's going to make endless monthly repayments of $460 and that will keep the balance of the loan at $60,000. Uh, sorry, yes, it's 60000 Okay, find the monthly repayments um, if, sorry, not monthly, find the amount that you will need to pay. So um, in this case, it'll be quarterly um, if interest is compounded quarterly and he makes quarterly repayments. Okay, so this time we need to work out the first quarter interest. Okay, and actually before we can do that, we need the quarterly interest rate. Okay, so that's going to be 9.2 divided by 4. Okay, so that's 2.3% per quarter. So the first quarter of interest is going to be 2.3% of $60,000. So that is 0 0.023 times 60,000. Okay, so dividing by 100 to get the decimal, 0 0.023 and multiplying by 60,000 to work out the interest. Okay, so the interest in the first quarter is gonna be $1,380, okay? And so therefore the quarterly repayment will need to be 1,300, sorry, $1,380. Now, I just wanna show you that you can use Finance Solver for this, but it really isn't necessary. All you're working out is a percentage of the principal. That's it, that gives you both the interest and the payment. If you use Finance Solver, so if we go back to part A, um, obviously you're not told over how long a period because that's because the same thing happens every period. So you really just, you just look at one compounding period. So you just make N1, okay? Your interest rate, and it's an annual interest rate, you don't need to adjust it yourself. That's the advantage of using Finance Solver is 9.2. Um, the principal value and um, he's borrowing the $60,000. So it's been given to him by the bank. So that's positive 60,000. We're trying to work out what the payments need to be. Now, if it's an interest only loan, the future value will still be 60,000, okay? But it's gotta be negative because Marcus will still owe the bank $60,000, okay? So both the principal value and the future value should be the same, but one will be positive and one will be negative. Um, and then we just need to make sure payments per year and compounds per year are both, oh, sorry, are both. And this is why you don't use the down arrow because see how when I press down there, it changes um, the payment per year to 11, so that's why I use tab to move between the boxes rather than the up and down arrows. Um, so we want to know the payment, and indeed it shows us that the repayment every um, month would need to be $460. If we go to the quarterly problem, oops, sorry, the only thing that changes here is that payments per year and compounds per year are going to become four, okay? Otherwise, everything else is the same. We just want to look at what happens in one quarter because the same thing happens every quarter. Annual interest rate is still 9.2. Principal value is still 60,000. And we want in an interest only uh, loan, the future value will also still be 60,000. So pressing into there, we can get the same payment value of 1380. Okay, but as I said, it's really just a simple percentage calculation. So you really don't need the finance solver. Um, example three, I think this is the final example here. Yes, um, Sarah takes out an interest only loan for $6,000 to purchase a sculpture. The interest on the loan is 15% per annum, compounded monthly, and she makes monthly repayments on the loan. Sarah plans to sell the sculpture after two years. How much will she need to sell the sculpture for in order to not lose money? Okay, so what we wanna work out is how much interest does she pay over the two years? And so obviously then she's going to need to sell the sculpture for more than 6,000 because that's what she paid for it. But she also needs to sell the sculpture for more than the total interest she's paid in that time. Otherwise she's still losing money. Okay, so we wanna work out what is the um, monthly interest and therefore the monthly repayment, okay? All right, so interest um, on the loan is 15% per annum, okay? So the monthly interest, monthly interest rate, 
is going to be the annual rate, sorry, which was 15, divided by 12. 15 on 12, control in, oh sorry, let's get out of the finance of it. 15 on 12, control enter to get as a decimal. So that is 1.25% per month. Okay. So then if we want to work out the first month interest, which in an interest only loan will be the interest of every month, it's going to be 1.25% of her principal value, which is $6,000. So that is 0 0.0125 times 60,000. Okay, so that times 60,000. Sorry, not 60,000, 6,000. My apologies. So let's just fix that. Okay, so the first month's interest is $75. And so this means that the monthly repayment is going to be $75. Okay. Over, um, so she's going to sell the sculpture after two, after two years. So over two years, the total repayments, so she's going to have made 24 monthly repayments. So she's going to have made repayments totaling 24 times $75. So she's going to have made repayments totally $1,800 over those two years that she's owned the sculpture. And so therefore, she needs to sell for more than $6,000 plus $1,800. So $6,000 plus $1,800, which is equal to, um, sorry, $7,800. So she needs to sell for more than $7,800 in order, um, okay, so she needs to sell for um, more than $7,800 in order to make money, um, but it's, the question is actually in order not to lose money. So she needs to sell for uh, not more than, at least, at least $7,800 in order not to lose money. If she sells for any less than that, she's she in total she's paid out seven thousand eight hundred dollars. So if she sells for any less than that, um, at that two year mark, um, she won't have she'll have lost money. Okay. All right. So um, exercise nine D is about interest only loans.